Hi, my name is Thais Gibson and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video. And in this video, I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about some of the three biggest patterns anxious preoccupied individuals can work through when it comes to their relationship to sex. So this has like been a burning topic for people. This isn't something that's come up so often. So we are literally launching an attachment style and sex course inside PDS in a tremendous amount of detail with like the different attachment styles, some of their patterns, some of their pitfalls, what you can do, how to reprogram these things, how to do work around fears, feelings of inadequacy, all these different components. Um, but I just know so many people want their, their hands on this information. Um, so I figured I'd put sort of a high level YouTube video out and then keep in mind, if you want to do a deeper dive and just learn about some of this stuff, you can literally click the link in the description box below and it takes you to our seven day free trial, which means literally you can check out this course for free for seven days. Um, and it comes with a workbook and like reprogramming tools and obviously with that seven day free trial it gives you access to all the different courses as well. Um, literally all 45 courses and um, you can do a deep dive into that stuff. We literally have four webinars I do with all of our students each week. Um, so a lot of like really great stuff in there. We've got um, social events, study groups. It's like an ecosystem of amazing personal development stuff in there and really, really incredible people. So feel free to check it out at any point for seven days by clicking that link in the description box below. Um, and that course is designed to really help you create healthy change so you can feel like your relationship to sex is like healthy, comfortable, thriving, clear, um, that you feel safe communicating about things related to sex. And some of these things are so important um, because physical intimacy is, is a component of our relationships, just like emotional intimacy or, or intellectual intimacy and closeness. So um, with that being said, let's talk about some of these big patterns here. So first and foremost, um, one of the biggest patterns that I see with anxious, preoccupied individuals is that they become people pleasers in regards to sex. And people pleasing, while it seems like an emotionally available thing, it's actually like a hidden sort of unemotional, uh, emotional unavailability. And the reason for this is because no matter what happens, if Bob is, you know, people pleasing anybody in any way, then Bob is not being authentic in that interaction. He's not allowing for his own self, his own needs, his own feelings to be seen and heard and connected to. So you can think of it as like Bob going in with a mask, right? And Bob may be like, hey, and all people pleasing to somebody else, but Bob is masked. And it actually prevents authentic two-way connection from occurring in relationships. And this absolutely applies to the anxious preoccupied relationship with sex. And I have seen so many individuals over the years who have had conversations with me, who have said things like, you know, I'm not very present during sex. I'm just always worried about the other person. I don't really enjoy sex that much. I just kind of feel this sense of pressure. Um, and so this is a huge thing because you're not allowing a two-way connection to take place. And so one of the biggest things that's important for APs to work on, and I understand like there need to be like reprogramming tools because sometimes it feels like a scary thing and is easier said than done. But one of the biggest things at the high level that APs need to work on is their capacity um, to show up, to allow themselves to have needs, to discuss these needs, to communicate about these things, and to feel like they're worthy and, and enough to, to be able to be taken into consideration in their relationships as well. Um, and any absence of allowing yourself to be seen only creates a sense of loneliness, even though you're in a relationship dynamic. Like, you can be in a relationship and still feel lonely if you're cutting yourself off from the relationship, if you're not allowing yourself to be seen and understood and communicated about. Um, and this absolutely applies to the relationship to sex. So that's number one. Um, number two, um, feelings of inadequacy is a big pattern with APs in the relationship to sex. And again, this can be reprogrammed. Um, there's a whole bunch of tools we have in, in a lot of depth in that course. Um, I can't go into like everything at a super intensive level right now. But um, think of it as like when there's this absence of you pressuring yourself and putting pressure and expectation on yourself and holding yourself to the standard of perfection in your sexual relationships, like the way you look, the way your body is, the way you interact, like, you know, when there's this absence of that, there's more ability to be present in the relationship overall. There's more ability to be connected. There's more ability um, to enjoy sex and to be a part of the, the interaction that takes place. And when you're 
having sex, but you're here in your mind and you're not present in the experience. You're here in your mind, putting pressure, thinking about, am I this? Am I that? Am I doing enough? Am I pro doing this properly? If you, all that pressure, it, it only acts as again, like a barrier to connection. It breaks down intimacy. And so you want to do some reprogramming work on your core wounds around that. Um, and you also want to practice being able to be more present in a situation. Um, and number three, one of the biggest patterns is um, a sense of feeling like you are not able to set boundaries. And this is a really, really tough one for APs because sometimes APs will feel like, I don't wanna have sex right now, or I, I'm not interested in having sex at this time, or this can be like in a long-term relationship, or maybe they're dating somebody and they feel like it's they're not ready to have sex with a person, but they feel this like sort of subconscious pressure. Um, and of course, like people can be pressuring and that can be an entirely different topic. Um, and, and obviously like that's a really important thing to discuss um, and put a hard stop around, but I'm specifically talking about the situations here where um, maybe an AP doesn't feel that connected to somebody yet or isn't ready to have sex in a relationship just yet wants to take a little more time but you know the topic comes up and they feel like oh if if i reject the person i'm going to feel really guilty or um you know i'm gonna you know feel like we're i'm gonna lose the person or fear abandonment so i better just you know be be ready and get ready to do that even though there's this absence of tuning into oneself and actually being able to do things on your own time in a way that feels really right and really comfortable for you. And again, this can be in a long-term relationship where you just don't feel like having sex on a certain day and your partner's initiating and you're just not interested at this time. Um, and, and it's so important to take your own feelings and needs into consideration. And sometimes what happens is APs get so afraid of being rejected or abandoned that they will deprioritize their own feelings and needs. Or sometimes what else, another thing we can see is APs um, are so worried about other people's feelings and they know what it's like to feel rejected and it's so painful for them. And because when they're around people, sometimes they can tune into more, more to others' feelings and emotions than their own, they can get into a position where they're like, oh my gosh, what if I hurt the person? And they worry about that and then make decisions almost from a place of self-abandonment of their own needs, desires, interests, and prioritize somebody else's and that can be something that actually hurts long-term. It feels like a, a boundary violation. Um, and, and in this specific case can be an internal boundary violation that takes place first. And then the boundaries that are violated externally where we violate our own boundaries first are always the boundaries that hurt most. Um, it's, you know, if somebody does something, like let's just say as an analogy, somebody comes up on the street and they rob you, right? They they violate your boundaries, they take your stuff. That hurts, but in a different way, right? It feels like a trauma, it feels scary, it feels like, whoa, but there's no sense of like shame around it usually. There's no sense of like um, internal um, frustration around things versus when we don't speak up for our needs, when we don't communicate our needs. Um, and let's say somebody says, hey, can I borrow $500 and you don't even have a full $500 in your bank account or you have 510 and then you can't pay your bills. We always hurt the most over things like that because they're the places that we violated our own boundaries first. So like to be super clear and specific, this is not me in any way as it relates to sex saying that um, if somebody violates your boundaries, you're at fault. Absolutely not. What I am saying is there are certain cases where APs, maybe in long-term relationships, for example, don't take themselves into consideration enough and then later feel like their boundaries were violated by the other person, when in fact, there may have been a part where they can actually empower themselves and say no to things in general and say, no, I don't feel like doing that and, and be more attuned to their own feelings and needs. And that can be a really supportive way of um, them honoring themselves. Um, and then there's other cases that happen to people in general. And I'm saying this all because I know this is a sensitive topic and I don't want it to be taken out of context. Um, you know, of course, people can violate your boundaries when you didn't ask for them or people can pressure you or people can do all sorts of things that are totally inappropriate. And that's on that person. And that person is at fault. And these can be in other, you know, more sketchy situations. So let's keep that as a separate topic. Um, 
I'm specifically talking about in our interpersonal relationships, when we don't consider ourselves enough, it can leave ourselves feeling self-abandoned, self-betrayed, things like that. And then of course, it feels also like our partner or our loved one left us in that position or made us feel that way. And it's a place that I feel that if I wasn't honest about how often I've seen this over the years, um, that it doesn't give the AP proper opportunity to be able to consider themselves and work on this and, and feel more respected and honored in relationships because they vocalize and they speak up and they allow themselves to take up space and do these really valuable things that are important for the AP's healing as an individual and in relationships. Um, so hopefully this makes sense. And um, sort of hard to to talk about these these sticky topics sometimes um but I really believe in like sharing things that are valuable and, and sharing important resources um and wanted to tackle a tougher topic um because I feel like it could be really helpful to anybody who may need to hear this um so hopefully this makes sense thank you so much for watching if you want to do a deeper dive into our course please feel free to check it out and please like share and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video